Alright, hey guys, it's Alex here, and today I'll be offering you guys some tips and advice upon playing the game Adventure Quest World. So, starting off, we're going to talk about private messages, or PMs, in which people call them. So, there are many ways to talk to someone, or private message them in a way. The first step is in which most people probably do, but once you get used to all the other functions I'm going to tell you, you guys will probably be using those way more, but... The normal way the game implements it is you go into options upon the character's name and you click to whisper and then it'll type to their username and in which you can start typing your message to them. And when you type a message to them, it will normally say something like this. For example, I'll type, hi, you know, something nice, hello, and it will show in purple. So purple is what purple, um, the private messages are. And so there are many ways to reply to it. A way you can reply to the message is if you get one back, you can do slash R. This means slash reply in which you can start replying back to them, okay? Another way you can do it is actually do slash tell. What you, uh, for this one, it's going to be slash tell and then their username. So like his name is Art of Spamming. So you do slash tell Art of Spamming. And then after you get their username, press space. And there you go. Now you can talk to them that way as well. One final way is actually if you on your keyboard look for the key that says shift, get that, go on your mouse, click on the name, left click it while holding shift down, and you can also reply via that way. So that's also another cool way in which you can reply. So that's three different ways or four, however I can't count. So that's a lot of cool ways. So another thing is I'm going to be showing you guys about the party. So now about the party this thing's a bit different so in which you can when you're in a party you can start typing right and you're like wait a minute why isn't this in a party chat well you do slash p mean slash party to only talk in a party chat so like that so notice how the party chat is now in this kind of sky bluish color which is pretty awesome so it's gonna be like that so most of you guys some of you guys might not know this but if you guys are like stuck in the party like wait a minute i want to talk to everyone else not the party do i have to leave it no you don't you can also just do slash s which slash s then space what this allows is to get out of that so when you're in the party now you're out of the party ta-da you can also do this for the guild chat as well so like you can so here's the guild do you go into your guild chat you do slash r or no slash g i mean so slash G and then space and then I'll just say something random raw you know and then you know when you press space bar or something it's gonna automatically take you to guild chat to get out of it once again you just do slash s space and there you go that's pretty much it for the chats and the private messages and stuff now I will show you guys some other tips in which some of you guys know some of you guys don't but yeah so if you press so these are just like basic keyboard um, things that are that just happen so if you press U, you can see all the players in your area. So this pretty much is, is um, it says, these are all the players in your area or in your map. And it shows all their classes, their levels, and everything. You can also view it by clicking the arrow on the um, very far right by the Yugar name right here, as you can see. But this only shows their username and levels. If you want to see what class there, you press U and in which it shows all of it. All right, so there's that thing. Another thing is if you press C, this is another command. If, by the way, if any of these keyboard techniques are not working for your thing, what you wanna do is click the send button once or twice and then you can click it. For some reason that works and kind of resets or makes it so it's like you're on the game now and not some other website by accident and it makes it so it works again. So if you press C, this shows your character overview, which I do a lot. And you know there is other ways of doing it like if you go down here and click on um, let's see stats and class you could do that way but if you just press C it just pops up way faster so there that's another way if you press V on your keyboard you can then view your health bar so it looks like this you can see everyone's health bar green means health red means no health or lost health whatever you need all right so another thing is if you press L, that will view your current quest you have. So if you press L, you can see what quest you have. But 
due to the recent addition of the quest things it kind of shows up like up here like in a quest screen so you don't have to do this anymore but that is just another way another thing you can do is if you press o this leads you to your options menu instantly right away instead of having to click on the options right down here so it's just a little quick way so another thing about players so if you want to know if the player's online or something you're like oh is a moderator online is it I don't know, developer online is my friend online. Because you know the friend list isn't really working that well right now. You can do slash who and then their username. So let's say art of spamming, right? Let's do that. And if their name appears, that means they are online. But let's say, for example, I do slash who Arctic. He's most likely not online. It shows no name, meaning he's not online on this server. So that's another thing you can use to check and stuff. It's pretty nice. Um, another thing you can now. So that's pretty much it for all the tips I have for like the functionalities. What now? Right now, I'm going to show you guys some other things that will help you on farming and some advice. So the things for farming is, let's say for example, you're doing a quest. Let's say um, something hard. Let let's say the Let's say this quest, so this is for the sculptures undead armor, you know, you have to accept this quest, go into a room, fight a bunch of monsters, and you have to come back here and do that. Well, what I'm about to show you is called the quest glitch. People do this a lot, and not many people understand how it works. So, what you want to do for the quest glitch is you go to the NPC in which you're doing your quest, get the quest, accept it, press back, leave this quest window open, go into your inventory right here, and click on any item you want, click on the, the trash can button delete and leave it there do not click yes or, or yeah do not click yes because you don't want to delete anything so when you're doing this i recommend you guys to use a uh, ac tagged item because then you don't have the chance of accidentally deleting some item you really like but you can do it for any item you want so it'll look like this so it's gonna look like this right so i'm gonna join another room okay so i'm gonna do slash join mall or something to like start doing the quest and so as you guys can see I can still move the quest um, window up and down still so and now I can just kind of go around and notice how the quest window is not going away at all so pretty much wherever I go as long as this right here is up in which it says are you sure you want to delete this whatever item the quest window will actually never go away until you press no or yes and then in which you change rooms the available quest or the turning in of a quest will be actually gone so that's a pretty cool tip that lots of people love doing a lot. So yeah, so I'm going to demonstrate. I click no, I change rooms, and it's gone. And now I can't even turn it in or anything. It just says back or abandoned. So yeah, that's another cool way. Alright, so one final thing I'm going to show you guys is... Um, actually, I'm just going to give you guys some advice now on Adventure Quest Worlds. So I get a lot of questions based upon or regarding... Uh, ACs and let um, membership and all that fun stuff and you guys always ask me and you're like should I get this or this and I'm like hmm well here's your answer my advice is when you're comparing ACs to membership ACs are almost always a hundred percent way better than membership membership right now currently really offers not too much so Membership, I guess you can get better enhancements by just a little, like really? Look, this is non-member enhancements, and this is member enhancements. They're like really slight differences, like look at that. Your intellect increases by one, your wisdom increased by one, like it's just... It's very minimal stuff that you see, it's only di a difference of like 10, 20 damage or so, it's not, it's not even that much. And also as a legend, I guess you get access to legend only areas, but really, all the areas I really like are non-member, and they're like the best places ever. So I personally don't see anything in legend membership yet, unless they add something really cool. But for now, adventure coins are always better than legends, or getting membership actually. So another thing about ACs now, on spending your adventure coins, so a lot of you guys ask me about adventure coins and in which how should I spend them like you like for example that Christmas event in which everyone got like 800 ACs if you're a good hero and you logged on and everyone was like wait a minute I got 800 ACs what do I do and I'm like uh, well all right 
ACs in order to use them efficiently. So the thing is, you can use them on many things. You can use them for um, buying AC tagged items. You can use it for buying house inventory. You can use it for buying inventory spaces. You can use it for buying bank slots. You can use it for buying more guild slots, like for your guild. You can do it. You can use them for a name change. You can use them to change genders. There's so many possibilities you can use with, or you can do with adventure coins, but. Not many people know how to use them correctly, so I'm going to show you guys what I believe is the best way to use your adventure coins. So adventure coins, you want to use them on rares, because the thing about rares is that rares will never come back. So I always tell everyone that whenever they have ACs, what do they do with them? Well, save and conserve. Wait until a rare comes out that looks extremely awesome to your fitting, to your style, and in which when that item comes, you can buy it, and then it'll be rare for her, meaning no one else in the future will be ever to get that awesome, cool item that you were able to get. And it makes it really cool, so rarity plays a big part. The reason why I don't suggest people to use ACs on permanent items in game is because you won't feel that special, you know? You're gonna be like, oh, I just bought this item for like a thousand ACs, but everyone else can still get it from here and forever on, you know? it just it lowers down the actual value of what that item costed so if it goes rare and you buy it it's actually gonna the value of that item increases as time um, goes on meaning that item you bought that was rare is actually way better than if you were to get it like a bit ago like for example i will show you guys something um let's imagine that this blood letters was um let's say oh actually no i have something better like for example this cape Swords of Courage, I got this way back then for like 500 ACs, and no one else can get it, and this is still one of probably the best rune capes in the game right now currently, and no one else can get it. It might have cost a 500 ACs back then, but right now, so many people want this cape. I mean, some people are willing to spend 5,000 ACs, 6,000 ACs just to get this item, but they just can't. So that's what I mean by like the value of that certain item goes up because you know as it gets more rare people want it more and it can never come back so yeah. Another thing about ACs is um, besides spending it on rares if you don't want any rares. So the thing is you guys know that I have a lot of non-member items like you guys see this you know are not those ones but like cyber crystal this item you know this this you know. These non-member items, you start with around 30 or 40 inventory spaces. I don't actually remember anymore. I don't know if they changed it, but you start with a limited amount of backpack spaces in which you can kind of do stuff with it. So what I suggest is um, you only want to start buying inventory space when you actually need it. So for example, let's say you have like 30 inventory spaces, but you only have like 15 items in your inventory. You really do not need to buy any inventory spaces yet until you're really full. By really full, I mean you have like all these non-member items, let's say, and they're all rare and just awesome and you just cannot delete them. So that's when you want to start buying inventory spaces. When you, So another thing is bank spaces. So a lot of people have been asking about bank spaces or when you should buy those. This is the order in which I think. I believe it should go inventory spaces only if you um, really, really need it and you're running out of room. Besides that, so it goes from inventory spaces only if you really need it to rares, so just rares that will go rare, to inventory spaces in which are kind of not really needed but you could get them. So inventory spaces are in between both. Like if you really need them, you should get them. If you don't really need them, I mean they're still really valuable but not as valuable as rares. After inventory spaces, I personally think bank spaces is right after because bank spaces, so if you got max inventory like 200 like I do, you can start getting bank spaces in order to store more. Well really, I don't think you need that much. After bank inventory spaces, you could use them on house inventory spaces. So house item will be increased to like 30 or so. And the reason you want to do that is just to make your house look stylish. There's really no point of it. Another thing after that is I would say guild members spaces. So you're just buying 
So like for example, my guild, I've spent a lot of ACs in each slot for each member it costs 200 ACs. So I've gotten a lot of slots for guys in which, you know, it costs a lot of money. And that's pretty much it. Also, one last thing about your adventure coins. Do not. I, I cannot. I don't know, man. Whenever I see anyone do, do this, it drives me insane. So what I say is that um, if you're using your ACs to buy classes, don't. Please don't. Just, just don't. It's really not worth it. The thing about buying classes is that you can actually earn all the classes. I mean, it takes a bit time, a bit of time, but you're actually saving like ten dollars. You do not have to use your ACs to buy your classes. You heard it here, folks. Do not use your ACs to buy classes. That is like my biggest pet peeve on this game, in which people do, and I it drives me insane. I'm just like, don't do it. You can earn the class. There are a few people who. Uh, do that so like for example the only reason why i use acs to get classes is to showcase the classes skills and then i sell it after so i lose acs but i show you guys what the class is capable of before you guys actually want to farm for it for something so that's my reason for doing it but really you guys shouldn't do that you'll be losing a lot of acs that you could be using for something else all right so this is pretty much it for this video thank you guys for watching hope you guys enjoyed hope to any of this helped you in any way and I'll see you guys later have a happy Friday guys peace